Hello friends, welcome back, episode... Oh god, I've lost track already! Episode 5? Episode 5. Reign of Terror, Diablo 2 Remake in Grim Dawn. How is everyone doing today? You can let me know in the comments in, I'm gonna say, three days' time. Um, give or take, but uh, you know, the thoughts then. So, what were we doing? We were... Oh, we, we made our way to Loot Galane last time. Uh, Deckard Cain wants us to restore an ancient Haradric staff. Classic. Uh, search the halls of the dead under the dry hills. <laughs> dry hills, don't you feel... Uh, for the cube, the maggot lair under the far oasis for the shaft, and the claw viper temple for the headpiece. Well, I'm not going to make that joke. The seven tombs. You've read Horazan's journal and now know the true tomb in which Talrasha was bound. Explore the canyon of the Magi and find the entrance to Talrasha's tomb. Okay, uh, a lot to do here, so I, I guess we're going to head out of Luke Galane in the first available direction and keep going until we find something interesting. Yeah, well, we're heading to the Dry Hills first, I think. Um, dry Hills, sound, they've got northerly vibes to me. They've got they've got north energy. Sure. Oh, the Rocky Waste. I, I did not mean to end up in the Rocky Waste. I wanted, I wanted the Dry Hills. There must be some mistake. Well, I've got Fiona with me. That's that's the main thing. Um, okay, cool. Um, I'm 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 hungry right now. I'm I'm looking for I'm looking for more stats. I'm looking for meteors from the heavens. How did how did that happen, please? There was there was a big old area of effect in a completely opposite place from where I clicked. I don't know. I, I like it. I'm not against it. Kind of wish I could check the text of meteor for a second, if, if that's all right. There's an obsolete wand, which is great. I'll definitely pick that up. Um, where are we? Oh, this is Oathkeeper. We can tell it's got the um, the Grim Dawn uh, graphics rather than the Diablo 2 ones. Uh, difficult to tell. I've broken into song. It's going to be one of those episodes. This is an, uh, this is an obsolete wand, however. Oh, I, th I think we're actually being assaulted by someone else, and that's caused the same kind of graphics to appear on the ground as when we destroy something with a meteor. Normal world. Um, this does not strike me as being particularly great. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to lose the elemental resistance we've currently got. Resists a, a generally king in ARPGs. Don't know about Diablo 2. No reason to believe it's going to be different from any of the games that followed it. So, I think we're just going to head through the rocky wastes, a zone that feels like it need not exist, and um, and and try to find the dry hills. This is giving me. Um, I don't know, it's giving me filler energy, this, li this little zone here. There's something up to the north. There's something to the north. To the stony tomb, level one, well. It's no hole level one, but we'll, we'll check it out. I did say I wasn't going to be exploring all of these little dungeons, but you know what? I didn't expect to get through Act 1 so quickly. Um, so maybe we, maybe we will check out some of these. Uh, of course, we will uh, We will more than likely be going through the higher difficulties as well. Unless the build just hits a complete brick wall. Which is likely. It's it's fairly glass cannony right now. But um, the, the intent certainly is, is to play through the higher difficulties as well. So maybe we won't go through all of these, these little side areas on every difficulty, you know. Or maybe we will if there are quests there because quests are mandatory, even optional quests are mandatory because they give devotion points, and that's a, just a huge amount of, of power in every single point. If you've got 81 points to allocate, every one of those points is, is very, very important. There's nothing nothing up here. Where are we? We should maybe know we've got a second check where we're heading, actually. We want to finish up Raven tonight, and then we're going to Magi. That was it. Okay. Just to remind myself, I should maybe write some of this stuff down. That's not going to happen. Checking we have no points to allocate. We currently do not. I like the music. That's why I'm going to talk over it. It's good, though. Hopefully the um, the the um, audio balance is, is okay. I've been tweaking it. Made it worse for a little while. I think I've made it better again. Hopefully. I'm looking for... Yeah, wand and offhand, or weapon and offhand, probably wand, realistically. Nothing up here either. I'm gonna take these components, I'm, I'm gonna wanna, um, 
Going to want to look at some of these components later on. Probably not right now. Uh, but in... Well, in Grim Dawn, you used to be able to combine components to make them better. Um, and most of the components you would find were um, partial components, and you would turn them into full components, or you could use them in a, like a powered-down version. But they got rid of that because they realised correctly that it wasn't actually providing any kind of fun or value to have to do that. A change which... It feels like it would have been controversial, but I try to stay away from the community around video games, if I'm honest, because I just so much of it is either is either toxic or just non-productive and just doesn't make me feel good to read or engage with. Obviously, there are exceptions to the Stony Tomb level two. That that was quite a quick one. But yeah, I, I feel like that change when they remove partial components and just, just have all components drop in their full full form, I feel like it's the kind of thing that is often controversial. But I like it. I just think it's neat. Okay, this is creeping feature. Oh god, it's a dev joke. No. What what are you doing, buddy? Is this is this Reign of Terror or is this Diablo 2? <laughs> So, alright, all maybe it warrants some explanation. Um, feature creep is... Oh, nice. Feature creep is a, a term used by developers for when um, you're designing something and you just keep adding more and more stuff that you think will be cool or useful until you've completely lost focus of, um, of, of where the project was intended to go in the first place. Um, yeah, I'll take, I'll take a life stealer oil. Um, it might be okay. I'm probably never going to use it. But, the Slugger, unique one-handed range. Interesting. More piercing damage. Whatever. Chance of knockdown target. Sure, I mean, I'm not attacking. Uh, attack rating, I think, is, is the Diablo 2 version of offensive ability. I think. Which, um, in Grim Dawn, is just a general marker of, of how, um, how, how good you are at hitting and critting. Um, the DPS is slightly better. It gives plus two to a soldier skill I have no interest in using. Like so many leveling uniques, you find it's just not relevant to, to my build. However, we do want to equip the Obsidian Seal now we can. We'll equip it, in, equip it instead of the Platinum Band. And this is like a, just a chipped opal? Uh, I might. I might not. Um, oh, you know we should. I'll, I'll, do, I'll just slap that in my chest armor and forget about it. Forget about it. So, the Obsidian Sealer's health, defense, elemental resistances gives plus two to safeguard, which is uh, presumably an Oathkeeper skill. Yeah, um, there we go. Shield bonus. Oh, okay. Um, improved fire damage, which is useful to us, and armor, which is nice. And if we put a point in that, um, we'll get a plus two bonus to it as well, so it'll go to three and then to four, five, six. That's worth considering. I think I might put a point in there. No. Yeah, I, I might put a point in there at some point. Seems like it might be useful while leveling. Bit of extra DPS, bit of extra armor. But for now, I am just rushing to Vyre's Might, which is a, a, an important movement skill. I'll be able to put points in that immediately once I hit 20. So maybe I'll put a point in Vyre's Might and a point in... Forgotten what it's called? Safeguard? Safeguard. And then I don't know where I'm going. I might put some more points in... Sorceress? Might put some more points in Sorceress. Because I think I probably do want to. Not Path of the Three. That would. <laughs> Path of the Three is a great skill. Um, probably not great for fire builds. It, uh, it's for conversion to poison and acid, I believe. Uh, fire Mastery, that's it. So just significantly improves our fire damage, burn damage, cast speed, as well as our resists, and crucially, maximum fire resistance. That could be really, really useful. 1% increased maximum resist may not look like a lot, but if it, it caps at 75 in Grim Dawn, I think. So if, you are, if you're at 75% resists, and um, then you go up to 76, you're actually taking, I'm going to say, 4% less damage from fire. So that, that's not bad for, for a 1 percentage point. It doesn't look great, but 4 percentage points looks a lot better. I don't know if that makes sense to you or me, really. But I hope you understand what I'm getting at. Oh yeah, what, what were you? You were an Eth rune. Sorry, it's been a couple of days. Um, increases mana regen. Eh. 
I have I have potions for that. I'm not poor. Do I look poor to you? Don't answer that. I can buy my own potions. Thank you very much. Thanks, Fiona. <laughs> Made me look real silly. Oh, and that was that was a flawed. It was a flawed. A flawed YouTuber who can't read things as they occur. Must be down here. Fiona's not really holding down the fort, is she? Is the thing. Holding the fort, not holding down the fort. It's That's a funny phrase, but it is wrong. <laughs> Forts very famously don't need holding down. They're, they're usually in the ground, if I'm honest. Right. We're level 20. We're level 20. The West Country's coming out again. Uh, we'll grab Vyas Might. We'll bind that to one. I always put a movement skill on one. So just to remind myself... Sorry. One second. Just to remind myself, Vyas Might targets an area um, within 11 metres. It does a little bit of damage when it hits, but that's not why we're using it. So we should be able to just target the ground. You love to see it. Short cooldown. A little bit longer than I'd like, but the thing about Grim Dawn is it, it really tries to stay away from like, the, the move speed and clear speed meta that is so common in other ARPGs like Path of Exile and to an extent Diablo 2, uh, Diablo 3, sorry. Were we meant to get something from here? I, I, maybe not. Was there like a boss to kill or something? Perhaps not. Maybe we're just, maybe we're just done. Yeah, so, so, so Grimdorn's very, very wary about putting in um, lots of bonus move speed and lots of movement skills, but you've got to have some, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking it. I'll, I will... I mean, it, it's quality of life, sure, but I'll, I'll also be using it in, um, in combat for getting away from things, mostly, rather than getting towards them. And because I'm really only using it for that purpose, I probably don't want to worry too much about... Um, the extra damage that this is going to... Yeah, the extra damage that this is going to uh, allow us to, to put into it. So I do want to look at other things that are available in Oathkeeper as well. Um, hmm. Oathkeeper is mostly a secondary class. So maybe I just want to go to Vyas Might for now. <laughs> I only put one point in that. I didn't even think about anything else. Um, I think I'm just going to rush to Fire Mastery. Yeah, I think for now, that's totally fair. Sorry, I've got a terminal case of British accent. <laughs> I mean, it's it's terminal because I'll, I'll die one day. Anyway, uh, we're going to head back. Runecaster Scepter, is that is that good? Um, no. Uh, mm, no, I don't care about cast speed. Fiona, you can finish that one off. I don't care about cast speed at the moment. I think we're done here. Yeah, cool. Great. Wait, wait, wait. The seven tombs? Are there, are there six of six more of these places and one of them is Talrashes? Ah. I see. I understand now. This could be a long quest. What happened there? Was that Fiona? Fiona, you saucy bitch. I didn't know you could do that. All right, I'm beginning to like you again. Um, is, is there, there's no like cooldown reduction or anything or um, any, because the corresponding sp skill in Diablo 3, you can, um, you can cause Meteor to be instant as one of the possible modifiers that you can put on it, runes that you can um, put on the skill. But it doesn't look like you can do that here, at least not by default. Obviously there are like whole whole different ways to, to craft things that we haven't haven't even looked at yet because we're level 20, but would be a real nice if there was something like that, or maybe we just changed to a different skill, you know? We we do have a devotion point. I had a feeling we did. I had a feeling we did. And we do. Always trust your gut. Also looking for the, the Haradric Cube, the Staff of Kings, and the Amulet of the Viper. 
But I mean, if I if I came across one of those things, I'd be like, oh. I, I guess I didn't need to be told to look for this. This seems important. What are you? Are you a tomb? You're not a tomb. You kind of look like you might be, though. More recipes. There's a lot of recipes dropping. Uh, do I want? Do I want to use this? Um, yeah, I'll drop the resists for now. Lightning is the one that's really worrying me. Music's pretty funky. Okay, well, where am I going then? Is this another? Is this is this, is this Care Stones 2.0? Karen Stones. All right. What's up here? This place seems important. These are ruins in the desert. Very important. Kind of difficult to, to differentiate from all of the other ruins in the desert, if I'm honest, but nothing of note there. Moving on. Should be using Vyas Maya a little bit more. Disregard. Okay. Can we can we get to the middle of this place? We just kind of skirted around the out, the out, outskirts. Around the outside. With Vyas Might, you can't, like, teleport to a place. Um, it's not like, like, teleport or flame dash or whatever. It's um, very much a, you're running along the ground a little bit faster for a second or so. But we can head up here. We'll throw meteors behind us. The um, meteors, are, the, the radius is enough that you don't really need to worry too much about how far things are going to move between you getting there. And not did I, did I get past, did I go past it again? Jesus Christ. Oh, we reckon we must have done. Well, I did hit something with Vyas Might. No, it doesn't look like we can get up here either. It really, I really thought we could for a second. Okay, well. Um... Maybe this is a red herring then, or maybe... It looks like there's an opening to the north here. I would love to be correct about that. I'm not optimistic that I am. He's done it. Okay. Oh, I, I missed this. Looks like there is the Stony Tomb level 1. This is, this is the one I went to, right? I'm not losing my mind here. If we can see the map, we can we can check. Okay, back we go. I guess we just head down to the south then. I think that's about the only place we can go. However, we have the might of Vaya, question mark. So we can we can get there a little bit faster than we could have before. So fast, not optimistic. It's actually significantly faster <laughs> than just running. Because you're... Oh, lovely. Thank you. Increases speed by 30%. Lovely. Um, yeah, because, uh, I mean, he runs far for a while, and that's great, but then he just kind of stops and catches his breath afterwards. And it's like, well, are you fast or not? Like, I would... I would love for it to be obvious that you are. That was incorrect. If we start hurting for DPS, I will... Um, I think that's when we'll stop and look, and look at components. Okay, these are the Dry Hills. Sick. And where is Tal Rasha's tomb? The Canyon of the Magi. Okay, so I think that that seal tomb was just a tomb. Just like a little side area that we could have gone to. And did. And killed some things and did. And maybe picked up some loot. And actually did a little bit. Yeah, 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 we did. No clear speed meta here, Fox. <laughs> but seriously, though. No clear speed matter here. <laughs> we still have insight proccing every now and then. I'm starting to think that insight from um, from a, a jewel or a component that we have, I can't remember exactly what it was. Dude, not the time to check your stats. Oh, it's Stormpox the hammer. The hammer. Man, I, I've, I've lived in, in Norfolk for 
four and a half years now, and I still find myself kind of defensively defensively doing the West Country thing, just to 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 prove my own identity to myself. Like, I'm not from round here. I know our accents sound pretty much identical to anyone who's not from here, but I'm from Plymouth. Uh, okay, so we're in the Tri Hills. I'm not one of you Norfolk farmers. I'm a Denshire farmer. We are identical. But you know, you, you never notice your accent when, you, when, you, when you're when you in your hometown, you know? I, I, I worked really hard as a teenager to get rid of the accent, and as soon as I left Plymouth, it just came, just came rushing back, you know? My dad did the same thing. The music's ramping up. It makes me think something's going down here. I will disregard it and continue on. Do I? I'm not a meta gamer, all right. I don't. I don't. I don't read the DM's facial expression to determine what I should do next. What's a monster manual? We're in the far oasis, dude. But it's weird because from here it looks like the near oasis. Much to think on. Whereabouts is the... No, 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 you're coming back. Whereabouts is the... Okay, the Halls of the Dead under the Dry Hills for the cube. The Maggot Lair under the Far Oasis for the Shaft. And we shall... We should we should go there now, right? We should go to the Far Oasis. Or we should go to the Maggot Lair. That place that sounds like somewhere I want to go. These are literally called Itchies. That's cute. We should go to the Maggot Lair now, we should head back to the Dry Hills once we've grabbed a shaft. A shaft, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so we, we've missed a waypoint here, the Halls of the Dead, under the Dry Hills, that's fine, we'll go back there. Why does, every, why does everything here hate me so much, man? I'm just trying to live my life. I'm just trying to find the maggot lair and all these itchies and swarmers are, are trying to swarm and, and or itch me. I will say, for, for a game that came out in, in the year 2000, I know this is in Grimdorn's engine, but a lot of the assets are from, from Diablo 2. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Okay. Not, not great. Did I say 2001? It came out in, in 2000, but I'm sure it did. Anyway. Is this the Maggot Lair? The helpfully signposted Maggot Lair? <laughs> maggot Lair level 1. No one knows how many levels there are. Ooh. See, I actually, I actually am starting to think that most of the environment is... From Grim Dawn. Like, I could be wrong. I haven't played a, a vast amount of Grim Dawn. I play it very on and off, usually between Path of Exile leagues, as I think I mentioned before. So I, I don't necessarily have a good picture in my head of what the art style looks like, um, just in kind of general terms. But I, I think that most of these, most of this, this environment is Grim Dawn, not Diablo 2. Maybe all of it. I, I don't, I don't know. I'm not a game dev. I don't know how the how the modding process works necessarily. Uh, do we want this? No. We do not. Well, actually, maybe we do at some point, but we're just going to keep pumping sorceress. I know, I heard it, I didn't like it. Oh, did that, did that, did that blow a hole in the wall? No, it did not. So good, okay. Slime door. We'll, we'll, we'll open the slime door in the maggot lair and grab our shaft look I, I know the shaft joke isn't funny I know it's the most the most obvious kind of lazy hack joke but you have to keep in mind I'm an obvious lazy hack so what do you expect you know it's and also it is funny 
That's funny to me. We have to find ways to laugh at things. And, and you know, sex is objectively hilarious. I don't care, I don't care whether you've had sex with a, a thousand people or no people. Sex is very funny. And if you think it's not, you're probably boring. Um, let's go to the maggot layer level two. It's just an objectively hilarious thing to do with another person. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend it's not. Video is going to get demonetized now because, you know, I, I'm not a big enough channel to monetize it, so that's probably why. But also because of the because of the sex thing. This YouTuber mentioned sex in a way that wasn't shameful. I cannot allow him to be rewarded for his actions. You know how it is. I, I don't know. If you know how it is, can you let me know? Because obviously I've lost the fucking plot. Okay. Luckily, there's a quest object here to distract me. <laughs> and we've got to kill Coldworm the Borrower, which is, again, almost like a real like name for like a, a monster that you might come up with organically. And we're going to fuck him up. He's doing nothing, but Fiona... Oh, I saved her. By destroying her and, and resummoning her 30 feet away. Okay. Three amethysts? Yeah, motherfucker, get, get Star Trek. Um. Don't want any of that, I think, but there's a gilded chest. Well, we found the Staff of Kings. That's the main thing. Seems useful. Uh, Manticore? I don't know what that is. I'm going to summon a meteor on it because I'm 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 very confused. And when I'm confused, I get I get angry. And when I'm angry, I get violent. And I'm working on it. Okay. Do we have to do we have to come all the way out, back out here? I think we probably do. I don't think there's anything else we need in here. So. Bloodsworn Codex of Blood. <laughs> Sick. You don't understand. It's not just a video game. No one understands me. What's in here? Very little. There's an ornate strong box. Excuse me, there's an ornate strong box there? A ribbon? Nah. Gonna leave that one. Oh, I think it's here, right? I'm going to check what that does. I'm sorry. I know I should have done this beforehand, but my my mute key is is doing something in game, and it's making making everything darker until I press it again. I have no fucking idea. All right. I don't know what the name for the button is. It's the one directly to the left of the one key. And above tab and below escape. You know the one I mean. It definitely has an... It's, it's got a name that I've learned several times, but just never seem to hang on to it because it just never seems like an important enough piece of information to, to devote any attention to, you know? This place does a very good job of making you feel claustrophobic. The music in particular, yeah. Get teleported, son. Didn't help. Black locusts. Are you are you friends of Itchies? Do you know Itchies? Are you uh, sorry, are you just colleagues? Do you not really get on outside of work? I I've been there. Uh might might run away. Hurting for DPS? Not really. The thing is, we need to do so much DPS because our survivability is so bad. So I think we're going to head back to the... 
Far hill? No, we're in the far oasis. We're going to head back to the dry hills. And then go to the crypts of some lad. The halls of the dead. Close enough. What is a hall of the dead? That will be a crypt, if I had to guess. There is a chest back there. I'm trying not to care so much about it. Why are you glowing? Why? Why? Answer me. Answer me, Death Beetle. Tell me why you're glowing. Too late. Oh, it wasn't wasn't you. It was the kind of midden heap behind you, I guess. Okay. Um, no, don't want that. Cool. The reason I sometimes cast Meteor when I stop, by the way, is because left move is on left click, just holding left click. And one of the easiest ways to stop dead in your track is to just right click. Because if you just stop holding left, your character will keep going to the to the point where your cursor was when you um when you stopped holding the left mouse button. But if you hit right Okay. If you hit right, there we go. <laughs> and actually let go of the left button. Doesn't do that. There is actually a reason. I'm not just wasting mana, who knew? I am kind of just wasting mana though. Each cast uses fully, like, 11% of my mana. It's probably too much. I've got to say Fiona. She's, she's actually helped me out quite a bit. I wonder if I can talk to her, like in, um... Uh, like in, you know, like uh, those those are like D&D &D clone games, like Neverwinter Nights. You would like hire a henchman and, and you know, to kind of simulate having more than one person in your party. Because D&D &D is not a game you can generally win alone unless the, the campaign is tailored for it. But um, you generally need like a, a good variety of skills across a whole party. So in, in Neverwinter Nights and I think Baldur's Gate as well, although I never played it, you would hire a henchman and then like they would become part of the storyline depending on who you hire. You would be able to chat to them and figure out more about their backstory and stuff. Which is kind of a, a core part of, of modern D&D, although it really wasn't at the time. I think um, I think we have a, a lot to thank Critical Role and Matt Mercer for in, in that regard. Thank or blame, depending on whether you think it's a good thing or not. I, I like it. You know, the idea that, that it's more of a communal storytelling experience than just, well, Diablo. Nothing against Diablo, but a, a communal a, a communal storytelling experience, it ain't. It's not what it's meant to be. It's different, is the thing. Some days you want to figure out why Zaxar of Lampu ended up in the in the dark cave beyond the uh, the Waypoint Tavern, and sometimes you just want to kill a spear cat. You know, it's different strokes for different folks. There must be a gold star here to stop me going off on yet another D and D tangent. There has to be. My audience demands it. Where is it? Where are we going? The Halls of the Dead. I feel like that place should be signposted more than the maggot letter, right? Alright. I'll take it. Did you know that you can enter Act 6 if your character dies on hardcore difficulty? I did. I thought there were... I didn't think there were six acts, though. Maybe that's... Is that is that a joke? Is that the joke? Is it like, hey, yeah, you can do that because Act 6 doesn't exist? <laughs> uh, maybe. I, I don't know. Maybe there is an Act 6. I'm really getting to the point where I'm not murdering these guys in one hit, and it was gonna happen someday. <sighs> kind of wish it had been like maybe tomorrow. Who are we killing? Hayes Webb of the Slayer. You are not a real thing. Get murdered on Sun. Hmm. Maybe Demolitionist would have been a good play. Instead of Oathkeeper. No, I think Oathkeeper's better. I think Oathkeeper's better. Demolitionist would have been maybe better for DPS, but Oathkeeper is going to give me survivability. 
Although having said that, maybe we should actually look at what kind of survivability we're going to get from Oathkeeper. Uh, like shield bonuses really are the big thing, I think. Yeah, oh, we're going to take Safeguard. Yeah, we, we will do that in about 17 seconds when we level up again. There we go. One point becomes three. And then we push more Sorceress. So, Safeguard gives us extra armor if we're wearing a shield, which we are, um, as well as extra fire damage. Um, the others we don't really care about, but that's that's nice. Yeah, good to, for one point, plus two points from, from our gear, that's not bad at all. I'll take that. So one point doesn't need any, any great thought put into it, I don't think. And it's passive, so we, we don't have to worry too much. Um, again, kind of, kind of metagamey, I guess, in a, in a different way, but... I'm really trying to avoid committing to a build which requires me to use my keyboard, because I'm very aware that my keyboard is real fucking loud, so I know that can get annoying. It's kind of unavoidable sometimes, he says, using Vyre's might to travel three feet and stand still for two and a half minutes, but I'm trying to trying to limit it a little bit at least. We're looking for the Halls of the Dead level 2. I, something tells me we're not going to find them down here. I think that's just going to be the the entrance again. And we can grab... We'll grab some more strength. Some more physique. Gives us a little bit more... Um, a little bit more survivability. Allows us to equip some better gear, potentially. Although we're going to be getting a lot of um, a lot of that from our Oathkeeper Master as well, that will pump up some physique for us. So maybe we can commit uh, some strength. Sorry, I should commit to saying strength dex int. Not. Um, I can't. I can't even. I'm so mindful of it. I can't even remember what the what the Grim Dawn version is. But I should commit to the Diablo two versions. Uh, physique, cunning, and spirit. That's it. Yeah, we'll, we'll be grabbing a lot of um, a lot of bonus strength from our Oathkeeper Mastery, so maybe we we can afford to put a few points in intelligence for DPS and mana regen. Just get a meteor here. It's got an eight meter range, eight meter base range. So any increases to area of effect will also increase that, of course. Foul Growler, the Hammer. Terrifying. You, you don't want to have to have that in your obituary. Impaled, I nearly did. Impaled by Foul Growler the Hammer. That thing everyone's heard of, terrifying. <laughs> Much respect. Not many people could stand up against Foul Growler the Hammer and live to tell the tale. Yeah, I'm, I'm losing a lot of my health with every hit here. Pretty scary. There are things we can do to, to change that immediately. We can craft some better gear. We can uh, look at our augments and gems. We could even just level up a little bit, though we're perfectly on, on par with these guys. We can invest more heavily into DPS so that we can kill them before they kill us. I like that that idea. It seems pretty good. It's pretty smart. You have to be pretty smart to come up with an idea like that on your own. I'll tell you that much. I don't even know what shrine this is. Um, combat shrine increases physical damage by 150% and attack rating by 10%. Not huge, but not nothing, because attack rating is meaningful for us, I believe. Have we gained any crit damage, by the way? No, apparently not. Hmm. That, that was always an issue for us before. Like it says plus 0% to crit damage. Maybe that's to bonus crit damage, like bonus damage to our, our crit multiplier. Maybe. Because it certainly seems like when we do crit, we are doing a little bit more damage. I'd like to crit now, so I can test that first time. We're doing... Uh... Yeah, so 3,500 to 4,000 on a, on a regular hit. Halls of the Dead level 3. Damn, son, did not sign up for this. Literally signed up for this. <laughs> Crit. 
Great. So our damage is very variable, so it's maybe a little bit difficult to tell how much extra crit damage we're doing. Especially when we never fucking crit. Or even hit at all, apparently. So, there are 81 devotion points available in, in Diablo, in Reign of Terror. That, to me, says that there are three difficulties with 27 points per difficulty. Because you get one for each quest, right? So there's like tw maybe 27 quests in each difficulty. 27, 54, 81, right? Maybe? Am I, am I overthinking it? Maybe. I'm certainly not underthinking it. I think that's important to recognise. Um, Assassin's Haunted Vestment of Decay? Nah. Is it okay if I just keep summoning meteors on these guys? Is that is that alright? Do I have to worry about decay and assassination? It all seems a little bit messy. I'm just gonna just gonna cleanse them with fire. I did have a, a and I'm sorry again for mentioning this. I did have a character in my D and D group a while back who who mentioned they wanted to clean something with fire. And I was like, cleanse is a little bit maybe a little bit more more of a classic phrase. Oh, I want to clean it with fire. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I guess. I don't make the rules, I'm just the DM. Who are you? Blood Witch the Wild. Okay, okay. So so I, I get it now. Like the higher we go in, in difficulty and acts, the more sensible the monster names become. Dried Corpse. Okay, maybe not. Disregard. Fiona, I'm teleporting you to safety. Mostly to heal you. Because you you're not doing nothing for me right now, and I, I intended that double negative. You are, you are helping me out, significantly. It would be really nice if you were a tank, could, could maybe generate a little bit of threat and, and prevent me from dying, but I, I respect you nonetheless. A contributor to DPS, and you are, you are slowing my enemies a little bit, I think. Which is nice, because then they can't reach me. Oh shit. Mighty Ribbon of Ruin. Nah. No, I don't think so. I assume the amulet of the viper will be amulet. The amulet of the viper will be here somewhere. Is it in the mummy sarcophagus? Or the daddy sarcophagus? Doesn't make sense. Where is it? Oh, to, to the dry hills? No, that seems wrong. It's here. It's in the gilded chest. Oh, we got a, a rogue's bow. A unique bow does no damage. It actually doesn't look too terrible. Not for this build, obviously, but in general, I can see I can see that being useful at this at this level. I'm I'm just waiting on my first unique spellcaster item. That would be ideal. 30% chance of doing 250% more damage. So that's that's like a like an 80% more damage, right? On average. Maybe not 80% increased damage, you know, I mean, the, the discrepancy between more and increased is long-lasting in ARPGs. I think we can blame Path of Exile for that one. And, uh, and uh, again, if, you, if you're not used to ARPGs, um, if you are, for whatever reason, here for the commentary, uh, I don't judge what other people do with their free time. Um, they are full of seemingly conflicting stats, and, and stats that look the same but aren't, and um, managing all of those stats at once is like a really core part of building your character, which is itself a really core part of, of playing an ARPG. And um, you will often find things like 20% increased damage, which is not the same thing as 20% more damage. Because... Um, all of the, and I'm not saying this is true in Diablo 2, I actually don't know, but in, in many RPGs, most notably Path of Exile, I think, um, all of your increased damage modifiers are added together and then multiplied all at once. So generally, 20% um, increased damage is way less than 20% more damage, because 20% more damage is just an extra times 1.2 on the end of your final damage calculation. Whereas 20% increased damage is not. 
I probably explained that terribly, but hopefully you get the idea. Um, so we're going to the amulet. Of the, we're going to grab the amulet of the viper. Um, oh yeah, the claw viper temple for the headpiece. Okay, so we'll. we'll well, there's a waypoint up here anyway. We'll um, we'll grab that. Uh, we didn't grab. The, we didn't get the waypoint of the hordes of the dead level two. I don't think we'll need to. Hopefully. Um, we'll we'll just keep going. I guess see if we can find the lost city. You often find temples in cities, I believe. So we'll just keep going. Hopefully, we'll we'll find it. Before too long, it would be a nice way to round this episode off. We're three quarters of an hour in already. Um, I would also like to take this opportunity, three quarters of an hour into episode five, to apologise for the audio issues in episodes three and four. Um, I haven't actually exported episode four yet, but I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna suffer from the same thing as episode three did. I ran out of hard drive space while recording both of those episodes, um, and had to had to knit them together in a in a open source video editor because <laughs> for whatever reason Windows Movie Maker or Windows Video Editor as it's now called um, was not exporting with audio so I just downloaded a, an open source one so if you see my credit card information for sale on a third party website please buy it it is it is only debt that will pass into your hands um, this seems like a dead end thank you that's definitely where I wanted that meteor to go dude how could you tell I'm thinking we might change active skills at some point. One of the things I love about Grim Dawn is how easy it is to respect your character. And I'm assuming that's going to hold true in Reign of Terror as well, because it's one of the things that people really love about Grim Dawn. It's one of the things that's almost universally considered to be a, a really good thing, is how cheap and easy it is to take pretty much all, well, all of your stats out of a given mastery. You can't change masteries. I am a... What is it? A Vizjeri mage forever now. I'm always going to be a sorcerer stroke oathkeeper. But I could completely change all of these stats, take them out very cheaply, and put them into, into Ice Bolt, for example. Which I might do, actually. I might do that. Seems like it might be better for crowd control. Hopefully. And if I don't like it, I can switch back. It'll cost me maybe a couple of thousand gold. It's tempting. It's tempting. Sh sh should we do it? Should we, should we just should we just fucking do it? Hmm. Not convinced it's actually significantly different. I mean this well, okay, okay. So this this gives us frostburn damage, which is cold damage over time. We also have we also could, Sorry, the throat's really dry. We also could grab Frozen Armor. Which um gives us some armor and um and armor. And I saw cold damage retaliation. Or we could go for Inferno, a channeling skill. I haven't really looked at my options before. I've just kind of been going with Meteor. Hmm. I'm gonna think I'm gonna think about it between between videos, because we are kinda getting close to wrapping this one up. But uh, but yeah, I, I think I think we'll uh, I think we'll we'll change our active skill. Haven't even looked at lightning, dude. Charged bolt! Lightning! Chain lightning? Energy shield, okay. Chain lightning, I'm sold. On at least one of these many skills. What's in the Lost City? You know what, we're, we're nearly at the hour mark. Inquire in Luke Gillane about the eclipse in the Lost City. Okay. The Tainted Sun, yeah. Um, Path of Exile also has an homage to this. I, I assume it must be. It's like, it does seem like it kind of comes out of nowhere in the storyline of Path of Exile in, in Act Two when you um, uh, when you get to the the ancient temple in the forest and find that <laughs> spoilers, um, and find that um, fucking with it causes a, a, a an eclipse to fall over the land. I assume that's that's an homage to Diablo Two. It, it seems seems correct. So I think we will inquire in Luke Galane about the eclipse. And I think we'll probably leave it there. Um, we, we, we will. We will like, inquire. Hmm. 
Who are we inquiring with is the thing. Uh, you would hope it would be marked on the map. Deckard Kane seems like the obvious choice. The Staff of Kings. You astound me, my friend. You have discovered the shaft portion of a Haradric staff. I trust you know how to use a Haradric cube to unite the shaft with its headpiece. Oh, if you didn't know... <laughs> If you didn't know, that would be catastrophic. It would destroy Loot Glane itself. But I don't need to tell you. I'm sure you'll be fine. Okay. Maybe it's because I'm pointing a gun at his head. Maybe that's why he's so off-put. That would make sense. Uh, the only other option is... Jering? My astrologers failed to predict this eclipse. You should seek Drognan's advice. Who the flip is Drognan? I've, I've heard this name. I think I have spoken to Drognan. He is not the same as Wariv. I'll tell you that much. Is he... Oh, we can, we can just look on the map, right? Drognan. 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 Drognan? I'm going out of my mind here. Where the flip is Drognan? Drog, Drog, Drog. Can I call you Drog? Drognan's magic goods. Okay. Okay, so it's win-win, right? Either he's there and we get answers, or he's not and we can rob his store. I've been researching this lengthy eclipse, and I believe it to be the work of Claw Vipers. Find their temple beneath the desert sands, and you may find the source of this curse. Good. Love finding the source of curses. Seems to be all I freaking do these days. Um, well, I think that's 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 gonna do it for this episode. I am gonna spend a couple of minutes, probably on camera, definitely on camera, um, looking through some skills and picking what I'm gonna try out next. Um, but that's gonna do it for gameplay. So, thank you guys for watching. Um, so, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do, guys? For those of you still watching, what are we gonna do? I'm excited. Charge bolt or ice bolt? There really are our two main options. I like ice bolt. Feel like it could be good for for crowd control. And I do like damage over time. Frostburn damage, yeah, I could I could take it, and it will also um, help us freeze enemies. Seems like it might be nice. Uh, I think all of these are functionally the same, right? Like the the. Mm, no. No. So fire mastery, fire mastery gives us casting speed. Lightning mastery gives us uh, reduced skill mana cost, and cold mastery gives us skill cooldown reduction. Um, but apart from that, there, I mean, you, which one you pick is going to be entirely based on what your primary skill is. I don't think you choose a primary skill based on which mastery you want to take. So no need to worry about that for now. We're going to go with whatever we, whatever we need to by that point. Um, we could just try out Inferno. Uh, Blaze. Your footsteps leave flames in their wake with this skill active. Uh, interesting. Do they though? Because it's it's like a one and done, right? It's, um, it it has a mana cost associated with it, four seconds skill recharge. So I don't really know how to pass that. I, I appreciate they are working within Grimdorn's um, kind of stats window tooltip template. That's what I'm looking for. But I'm not sure I understand Blaze. We could, we could try it. Inferno's a channeling skill. Channeling skills tend not to be great for tanky characters because you have to stand still while channeling. Um, but with a firewall... Uh, no, I don't, th I don't think so. Um, we, could, we could go for, for chain lightning. That seems like it might be pretty cool. Triggers additional arcs of lightning through multiple nearby targets if it hits. Yeah, we could... Like, no one would stop us, you know? Oh, and we could grab ourselves Energy Shield as well. Raises a protective shield which absorbs a percentage of all incoming damage. 2.5 mana cost per second. That's a Grimdorn mechanic that I really like, actually. Uh, it just drains a little bit of mana every... A mana? A little bit... A little bit... A little bit of mana every second. <laughs> um, also reserves some. Pathology. Dude, I, I, oh, I don't want to think about work when I'm not at work. Infiltrates the target's mind from a distance, knocking them back and exposing their vulnerabilities. Um, it's like a, like a debuff. Sure. 
probably never going to use it. Teleport! Oh, shit, dude. Why did we take Vyre's might when we could have taken teleport? It doesn't seem to have a cooldown. Costs a lot of mana. 30 meter range? All right. I think we grab one point in each of these and we go... Um, Glacial Spike? I don't know, something about something about this is just like coward shit, you know? Okay, we're a lightning mage now. Um, let's see if we can figure out how to change our spec. I think we can up here, right? Tome of Wisdom, that seems correct. Yeah, okay. So we'll take some points out of Sorceress. We'll, co we'll come back here for now. We can always put those points in later on. And we'll just completely undo this. And you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna take a point out of Vyre's might as well. That gives us 22 points to play with. And and let's let's just again take I did because I didn't you know I didn't show how how cheap that was. Uh, oh, it costs costs zero. Okay, that maybe that's a, maybe that's a reign of terror thing then. Um, either way, it's it's very cheap in in Grim Dawn. They just made it better in in Reign of Terror. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put one point in each of these. The increased ranks just lower the mana cost. Uh, I, I thought it's a 30 meter range. Maybe I, maybe I had something else that, that increased the range of it somewhat. So I'm not worrying too much about pathology. That's just like a prerequisite for teleport, I believe. He says, putting another point in it. It's not a prerequisite? Okay, then I'm not taking it, I guess, is the thing. However, I will take Chain Lightning. I don't know that I want to... <laughs> I don't know that I want to um, to pump these. I, do I just put points in Chain Lightning? No, I, th I think... Okay, so do we, do we have, like, Sheet DPS? These are all different skills. These are all different skills, which means I probably didn't need to have any points in Firebolt either. Well, we do have Sheep DPS. Damage per second with Chain Lightning, 337. Let's put a point in Charge Bolt, see if it goes up. It did not. Okay. Cool. So I'm just, I'm putting all of my points in Chain Lightning. Can you stop me? Can you stop me, son? I don't think you can, is the thing. Uh, energy Shield we could use as well. That's going to be um, that's going to be a, a buff that we just have active, I guess. So we'll, we'll put teleport on here. We'll put energy shield on here. We will uh, we'll raise it. Do we, do we already have it? No. There we go. Now we do. Absorbs a percentage. I think it's I think it's a four percentage of incoming damage. Yeah. Okay. And we can just teleport whenever we want, wherever we want. We're meant to be together. Anyway, um, thank you guys for watching. That's going to do it for this episode. I'm looking forward to trying out... Fuck, my hair's fucked. I'm looking forward to trying out our new setup um, in the next episode. But thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.